Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Obama was just busted for hiding something sick in the White House. Despite having been warned not to assign political appointees to career jobs, and being asked by Republicans to avoid keeping workers who opposed President Donald Trump's policies, Obama, of course, did it anyway. Burrowing is where political appointees are appointed to career-level positions by an administration that's on its way out. A GAO report just identified that, in Obama's case, 78 of his appointees had burrowed in by the time he left the White House. You read that right. Nine of Obama's people are still working in the Department of Homeland Security. And we wonder where the leaks are? Of course, I have no evidence that any of those nine Obama people leaked anything. But that's somewhere I'd sure be looking. Senators Tom Tillis, RNC, and Ron Johnson, Republican Wisconsin, wrote to Obama, urging him not to disrupt Trump's presidency, saying that, burrowing in, further contributes to the possibility that federal workers may attempt to undermine the policies of the new president. But I'm sure that's exactly what Obama intended to do. Burrowing frequently takes place during a presidential transition. Bush did it, too. But that doesn't make me feel any better, especially with Trump's unique presidency and all that's gone on so far. If you want these Obama peeps watched, Please comment watch them and share to gather comments from all your people. H. T. Fox News and The Washington Times Donald Jr. just did something crazy in Canada that could have gotten him killed. Donald Jr. has gone and made headlines again. Not for anything good this time, either. Nope, apparently. He decided to fly off to Canada last week and put his own life at risk. At this point, it's a pretty well-known fact that Trump Jr. is a fan of big game hunting. It's also come out that he is not a fan of having secret service. So, when he flew up to Canada for his hunting vacation he decided to give the secret service the slip and leave them behind. He then took a week to himself hunting moose in the Yukon. Look, I get it. Having a full-time bodyguard must be annoying. However, he is the son of the president and needs to be kept safe. If he was kidnapped or killed, the backlash would be unthinkable. None of us wanted to force the Trump kids to feel trapped by their circumstances, but for the sake of their country, they need to be protected. I think we can get them to understand that by sharing this out everywhere and letting them know that we care for them and want their safety. Last night Tucker Carlson broke down and said the one thing leftists did not want getting out. Apparently even a man like Tucker Carlson has a breaking point. Last night, the former Republican strategist broke down on Fox News and said the one thing the left has been trying to make America forget. Tucker made an opening plea for America to realize that leftists have neutered the term racist despite racism being a bad thing. You know? It wasn't that long ago when calling someone racist was a big deal. It was a devastating attack on a person's character, if not blood libel. Now, everywhere you look, people just barely to the right of Al Gore are being denounced as white supremacists, white nationalists, neo-confederates. He is very right, too. It's sad to see so many not racist people being labeled a racist simply for being a conservative. That's all it takes these days to trigger an Antifa attack. Tucker points out that Americans used to recognize that bad working conditions hurt blue-collar black folks just as bad as blue-collar white folks. The divide has never been truly racial and, as a country, we used to know that. Tucker Carlson and myself both like to believe that the Republican Party is the true party of tolerance and unity. Even if we don't agree with another Republican on everything, we welcome them with open arms to help defend our Constitution. Reporter says Trump attacked NFL players, so Sarah Sanders shut her up with four bad S words. 
Trump has been fighting against the NFL this week after all the national anthem protests. The press won't drop it, either. Sarah Sanders was then questioned Thursday about the free speech implications of Trump's request for NFL players to stand. At that moment, Sanders cut off her question cold and said this, I think so are many Americans. More Americans than NFL players. Ryan then asked him how the president will keep fighting the NFL. This shouldn't be about the NFL being against the president, Sanders said, this should be about our country coming together to support the flag, the national anthem. There's nothing wrong with having pride in the United States. Ryan then said that they want to change the system. Sanders then said that the response is worth reprinting. If we're going to look at history, we should look at the thousands of Americans that have given their life to protect that flag, that anthem. We should be celebrating those people. I gave you a chance to answer. We should be looking at every way we can to celebrate our country, bring it together, not looking at ways to divide it. The president is talking about what we're for, not about what we're against. Certainly this administration will always be for protection and celebration of the flag and the national anthem. That's not going to change. Share this if you think that Trump is 100% right to criticize the NFL for their terrible policies. We stand behind him at Liberty Writers and hope that you all do too. Unforgivable Pelosi just went on camera and insulted all Puerto Ricans with one sick sentence. Slowly but surely, Nancy Pelosi is losing it. The House Minority Leader stunned the House floor on Thursday with a shameful on-camera gaffe that left Puerto Ricans furious. Even worse for the Dems, this comes on the heels of Hillary Clinton publicly slamming President Trump for not knowing Puerto Ricans are American citizens. Maybe Clinton's concerns should be directed elsewhere, especially when this meeting was conducted solely to discuss the ongoing crisis relief for Hurricane Maria. But when Pelosi took the podium after Puerto Rican-born New York Representative Nidia Velasquez, she immediately embarrassed herself and the entire party. Thank you to your commitment to our entire country and that includes Puerto Rico," said Pelosi. Puerto Rico may not be a state, but it's officially been part of the U.S. since 1898. This is something Pelosi should clearly know, but all she could do was dig herself deeper. In closing. Pelosi baffled onlookers further by claiming Velazquez came to America when she moved from Puerto Rico to New York. You were born and raised there and came to America to be a stark figure here you became one of the first women to chair an entire committee in the Congress of the United States, Pelosi said. Could Pelosi be any more ignorant and condescending? You might as well applaud Velazquez for moving from New York to California. This is exactly why we need President Trump and the GOP to run the House of Representatives. We need intelligent, thoughtful leaders who aren't too far gone to get the job done. If you think Pelosi should step down, or at least make a public apology, share this like crazy before it gets buried. Sources, DailyCaller.com Massive win the Denver Broncos just gave the anthem kneelers exactly what they deserve. President Donald Trump has said over and over again that it's high time that NFL owners step up and make their team stand for the anthem. Well, guess what the Denver Broncos and New England Patriots just did? Both of these Super Bowl winning teams have now pledged to stand together, not kneel, during the anthem as a show of unity with our country and our troops. The official statement from the Broncos read, We may have different values and beliefs, but there's one thing we all agree on, we're a team and we stand together, no matter how divisive some comments and issues can be, nothing should ever get in the way of that. Starting Sunday, we'll be standing together. The New England Patriots reportedly made a similar pledge a few days ago, although theirs lacked an official statement like Denver has. It's good to see these team owners and players taking action to respect our national anthem. There is nothing wrong with protesting. Hell, there is nothing wrong with disliking a president. But for God's sake, give the people who sacrifice so much the 30 seconds of the anthem. They have earned it. Seconds ago Steve Scalise returned to house, 
then immediately did something incredible. Republican Rep. Steve Scalise, the House Majority Whip, and his aides were shot during a baseball practice in June. Steve Scalise was shot in the hip and then tried to drag himself off the field. The media didn't talk about the fact that James T. Hodgkinson was a Bernie supporter. It was a sad day in American politics, but now those sad days have turned happy. Take a look at Steve Scalise now. This Thursday, House Majority Whip returned to the House of Representatives for the first time after his assassination attempt. Scalise entered the chamber on crutches. This was a truly amazing moment. I'm an example that miracles happen, shouted Scalise. Share this to welcome Steve Scalise back to the Capitol Hill and back to help out our president. We need everyone back. We need to get this country back on the right track. We need to make this country great again. Amen. It's sad that he was the victim of leftist violence and none of the chicken heads in the media talked about it. Game changer China just bent knee and did what Trump wanted them to do to North Korea. The Commerce Ministry in Beijing said today that all North Korean businesses will close because of this. Companies will have 120 days to shut down entirely, according to Daily Mail. China has given all joint ventures with Chinese firms 120 days from September 12. This is happening at the same time that the UN Security Council voted to boost sanctions on North Korea. North Korea followed the UN sanction with a speech that declared rockets to the U.S. as inevitable in response to Trump calling Kim Jong-un, rocket man. This means that China has bent the knee and is going to work with Trump. Amen. The United States has now pressed China to use its economic advantage over North Korea to help take out the threat that is North Korea. The media may be attacking Trump like crazy right now but they cannot deny that he is helping to fix the North Korea situation. Rex Tirson will be visiting Beijing this weekend to talk with Yang Jiuqi and Foreign Minister Wang Yi. God bless our president. This is a moment of rejoicing. Share this if you are glad that we have President Trump to fix the North Korea situation. Keep fighting for a better America, y'all. FBI just announced where terrorists may attack next. It'll come from the sky. FBI Director Christopher Wray has some shocking news for Americans, and it involves radical Islamic terrorism. While nothing has changed with the way militant Islamists feel about anyone non-Muslim, they are now looking for new ways to attack innocent civilians on American soil. Ray explained before Congress recently that terrorists are now looking to utilize drones to wage attacks in the United States. He noted, we've seen that overseas already with growing frequency. I think the expectation is that it's coming here imminently. I think they are relatively easy to acquire, relatively easy to operate, and quite difficult to disrupt and monitor. According to the director of the National Counterterrorism Center, Nicholas Rasmussen, two years ago this was not a problem. A year ago it was an emerging problem. Now it's a real problem. So we're quickly trying to up our game. Rasmussen added, that could be dropping small explosives the size of a grenade. It could be dispersal of toxins, potentially. In other words, terrorists still hate American citizens and are willing to do whatever necessary to make sure we suffer. Go figure. What will it take for liberals to realize that we need to be much, much tougher on radical Islam? Progressives need to understand that Donald Trump was elected for two reasons. One to build a wall on our southern border to stop the flow of illegal immigration. 2. To eradicate radical Islam from the planet so they can no longer impose their will. FBI Director Ray's words must not be taken lightly. He knows the enemy we're up against. He knows that if they can use technology against us, they will. H.T. Daily Caller